cared for the earth since the beginning of time. We are the stewards, the caretakers, the keepers of the land, air, and water. We are the indigenous people of the world, and we are using our traditional ways and science to protect Mother Earth. I'm Steve Sweethold, and welcome to Down to Earth. Today on our show, we're heading to the west coast of Vancouver Island, where we'll meet two new Chonolith communities who are guardians of the world-famous West Coast Trail. And later on the show, we'll head to the UN Climate Change Conference, where we'll meet musician and environmentalist Robbie Romero. For thousands of years, the Pachidat, Dididat, and Kuwait people have hunted, fished, and traded along the rugged western coastline of Vancouver Island. Today, these communities are the guardians of a 75-kilometer hiking trail that their ancestors once lived along. We're eager to find out what attracts thousands of people every year to take on this challenging and often dangerous trail. Our first stop is Bamfield, the northern trailhead and the home of the Huayat First Nation. How long have you been involved? Has your community, Hawaii, been involved with the uh, West Coast Trail Project and the partnership that you have going there? It, it started roughly in the early 1990s. The former chief counselor, or chief counselor at that time, Spencer Peters, uh, started to work with Parks Canada and had a vision of partnering with them to, to start working together on the West Coast Trail. What has that type of co-management meant for your community? Well, it, it's, it's meant uh, some really important things. Uh, first, we, we get to, to have input on, on how the area is managed, how the trail is managed. And it's enabled us to participate in the local economy, getting involved with the, with the hikers and, and having things to do with them, working with parks to, to, to manage that part of the trail. We do some contract work and that kind of stuff. And so it's our people to work, uh, exposes our, our area to, to the visitors. When foreign ships began using the Pacific Ocean as a north to south trade route in the 18th century, the trail was a life-saving escape route for the survivors of shipwrecks. Parks Canada looked at it in the late 1960s to establish it as a park, a hiking destination, a, a place for tourism. Today this world-class trail is part of the Pacific Rim National Park with the maintenance and stewardship managed in partnership with Parks Canada and three new channel communities. The Pachidat, Dididat and Huheyat came involved in the, in the beginning of the process when the uh, trail first opened. The reason being is they live in the areas. They play an integral part in working with uh, Parks Canada. With a history going back thousands of years, the indigenous people of this territory are dedicated to the ecological integrity of the trail and the preservation of its rich history. I'm wondering if the Hawaii and other new Chandlith had a connection to the trail. The whole history of Dittidant and the Hawaii were, were closely related, were intermarried. And, and that's how some of the intermarriages, you either came by canoe or you came by trail. And I remember when I lived at uh, at number nine and we were playing our traditional game called the hell. The Nitnat people used to hike in and, and they would hike in and be and then we play La Hal and when we we're finished they'd they'd hike home. And uh, but they, it was just the trail you know now but but they all said, Oh, this is what our forefathers, they've been doing it for years. So it's it's nothing new. Yeah. So back then if you mm -hmm. wanted to marry outside you had to look to that trail you sometimes. Had to look to that to trail. Yeah. 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 One of our chiefs said that took a wife from, from a neighboring nation, uh, they had what they call a two potty and part of it was jumping across a cliff that was 24 feet wide. That sounds and, a lot and, like and marriage. Exactly. And if you could get over there, you can take that girl. But if you didn't, well, you're Holy probably down there. This is, <laughs> yeah. no, this is no tall tale. This yeah, is real. <laughs> this is real. And that, that, that history was told by uh, Chief Louis Nukmas, uh, who was born in 1881. So he got to see some of the, the traditional marriages eh, that, that took place. There was a 
as many villages that our people occupied down by the waterfall, our chief used to actually live down there during, during the, the whaling and sealing season. They lived at a place called Kluhata, which was right uh, west of the waterfall. And I'm sure if people done an archaeological study there, they would find the remains of the village there. So when you meet the First Nations on the trail, um, you're getting who they are. They're going out there to do the maintenance and interpretation, but they're not doing it in a way that they have to put on an act. They're just acting normal, and, and, and I think the hikers see that. They, they, they like that. They like hiking with uh, the First Nations, and they want to know about the history of the traditional territories within the Pacific Rim West Coast Trail. It's natural for the First Nations on the trail to do what they do out there as an interpreters and maintenance people. You could see about four from each territory, so a dozen people, and probably half of them that are youth. What attracted me to it is being out there uh, where once my ancestors were before. It's just uh, a great feeling being out there, meeting people from all over the world, explaining to them our culture and who we are and where we come from, that we used to be out here before. So. Around campfires, we do salmon barbecues, and as the salmon's barbecuing, I mean, that's where we do a lot of the explaining of our culture, tell them about our potlatches, uh, tell them that there's a lot of, like there's a code of ethics with uh, all First Nations and everybody knows the rules. I feel really proud of where my workplace is. I feel just a great feeling being out there. <laughs> more of a cultural interpretation to our initiative. For example, when we had Eddie working for us, uh, he would do a lot of the story storytelling, sit down with the, with the hikers, uh, even sing songs with them. We can open the doors of understanding our cultures and our old ways of lives. And to be able to hold that uh, sacred within that traditional territory of Pachidat, Dididat, and Huheit, because without those cultures and the old ways, of living and keeping those values intact in the future, the West Coast Trail will not be the same. That's how that partnership works, is that the Parks Canada works closely with the First Nations to ensure that the integrity of the West Coast Trail will always be intact. And, and one of those integrities would be the cultural component. I'm hoping that in a hundred or a thousand years from now, it's still the same. And I think that's what people are always looking for. We have it. And with the integrity of the West Coast Trail, Parks Canada and the First Nations, if they keep that the way it is today for our future generations, it will be there for everyone to enjoy and to share.